Hello and welcome back. In today's episode, we're covering a case that demonstrates that no one is exempt from the law. Under different circumstances, a meeting with a state senator might be a pleasure. But when California Senator David Min decides to endanger the road by going on a drive while drunk, he'll end up going on a ride in the back of a patrol car. May 2nd, 2023, approximately 10.30 p.m. Before the footage begins, Officer Comerfield and his partner, Officer Blanchard, are sitting in their patrol car in the rear parking lot of a California Highway Patrol building in Sacramento. As the pair conversed, they noticed a silver Toyota Camry roll past the parking lot without its lights on. Thinking this would be a routine stop, the officers pull out of the parking lots and begin to trail the sedan. That's when they realize there might be more amiss here than they had initially thought. The car comes to an appropriate stop at the red light, but then proceeds to roll forward ahead of the traffic line. The Toyota runs the red light and makes a left turn, cutting across both lanes of oncoming traffic to get to the rightmost lane. Not only is this illegal, but extremely dangerous for obvious reasons. A car coming from either direction could have rammed into the side of the small car, resulting in devastating damage and injury. Thankfully, the officers don't let the driver make it much farther. Both officers exit the vehicle, and Officer Comerfield approaches the Toyota driver's side window. The officer requests the driver's identification and other necessary documents. Only after examining his ID do the officers realize that the driver is none other than one of their own state senators, David Min. They inquire if Senator Min has consumed any alcohol prior to driving, to which he responds that he'd had two beers a few hours prior. However, Officer Comerfield notes that Min's speech is slow and slurred, his eyes are red and glossy, and the smell of alcohol is present and coming from within the vehicle. The pair contact their sergeant to inform him of the situation, then ask Senator Min to step out of his vehicle to complete some field sobriety tests. First up is the horizontal gaze nystagmus test. Nystagmus is a medical term that describes involuntary jerking or movement of the eyes. The officer will use his finger as a stimulus and ask the suspect to follow his finger with both eyes as he moves it from side to side and up and down in front of his face. While this is happening, the officer observes the suspect's eyes closely with a flashlight in order to detect any erratic movement. As you can see, Min is turning his head to follow the officer's finger, which isn't proper execution of the test. The primary function of the test is to be able to assess the movement of the eyes. Therefore, the head should remain completely still and looking forward. The officer has surely informed Min of this aspect of the test. However, even with his head turning as well, the senator still appears to be doing a poor job of keeping track of the officer's finger. The next test is the modified Romberg balance. Here, the suspect will be asked to simply stand with their feet together, tilt their head back slightly, and close their eyes. They will then be asked to advise the officer when they feel that 30 seconds has passed. While the suspect is standing, the officer is observing their body for shaking, swaying, jerking, and tensing of the muscles. How accurate the suspect is in their timing is also important. Senator Min stops the test at 25 seconds. He can also be seen very visibly swaying from side to side during the test. Next up is the one-leg stand, one of the more standardized sobriety tests. The suspect stands with their arms to their sides and raises one leg slightly so that their foot is about six inches above the ground. 
They're then asked to stare down at their planted foot and count aloud 1-1000, 2-1000, 3-1000, and so on until the officer instructs them to stop. In this case, the officer asks Min to count 1001, 1002 instead of the customary method. During this test, the officer is chiefly assessing the suspect's balance. Throughout the test, Senator Min is observed bending his knee, wobbling, and putting his arms out to maintain his balance. After about 30 seconds, Min drops his foot and concludes the test himself at 1,016. The next and final test will be the walk and turn, which is also a commonly seen sobriety test. However, many don't know that the test is actually divided into two parts, instruction and performance. The suspect will first be asked to stand heel to toe on a real or imaginary line with their arms down to their sides. The officer will then proceed to explain the instructions of the test. The suspect thinks that the test hasn't started yet, but in reality, the officer is actually already examining their movements for signs of wobbling or instability, and to see if the suspect is actively listening to his instructions while maintaining this position. The suspect will then be asked to execute the instructions given, which is to take nine steps forward, walking heel to toe along the predetermined line. The suspect is then expected to turn around and repeat the process again the other way, looking at their feet and counting their steps aloud throughout the entirety of the test. The officer is noting whether or not the suspect steps off the line, fails to maintain pace or posture, uses their arms for balance, or takes the wrong amount of steps. Senator Min has completely failed the instructional portion of the test, first wobbling a great deal before giving up his position after only a few seconds. The officer's reaction sums it up. In his notes, the officer would say that men started too soon and placed the wrong foot forward. Based on their observations, the officers concluded that a breathalyzer test was the necessary next step. The breathalyzer test is taken using a PAS device, a handheld device that once blown into measures the suspect's approximate blood alcohol content or how much alcohol is in their system. When Min is notified of their intent to give him a breathalyzer, he isn't very pleased with the idea. Yeah. 
I don't think it says, like, what do you have to do? Uh, we'll go through that route. Yeah, we've got to go through that route. Okay. I don't want to be stuck in the way out because I'm just tired, so. We want to see, like, if you're below this, then I'm just going to go through it. Okay. 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 The results of the test show Min's blood alcohol content to be 0.15%. Min is tested a second time. The result is the exact same, 0.15% blood alcohol content. According to California Vehicle Code 23152, it is unlawful for a person who has 0.08% or more by weight of alcohol in his or her blood to drive a vehicle. Senator Min's blood alcohol level is nearly twice the legal limit, meaning that he is currently guilty of driving under the influence. Senator Min is appropriately arrested and placed in the back of the patrol car to be transported to the county jail. He appears to rest his head a bit before striking up a conversation with the officers. Was a .15, man. I, I couldn't even believe the that man. How many drinks is that usually? So the math that we usually do, uh -huh. like the easy math, is uh, about every drink is about .02. I, did, I don't know how I got to... But, you know, certain drinks are more, you know, if you're yeah. taking a shot. Generally, people are pouring. And I guess I'm little, too, so... So everything kind of has a little bit of a factor in how the body metabolizes the alcohol in your system. Uh, depends on if you beat it. Depends on, you know, uh, like how high a percentage the, the beers are, you know. Some IPAs yeah. are a lot higher percentage. about these numbers and I'm, I just like I just, just I would have thought that 1.10 was like a lot higher than what I had so yeah it's like what's the earliest I get home um, we're gonna work to get you as quickly as possible I don't want to give you uh, like false numbers yeah no worries uh, David Min is taken to the Sacramento County Jail, where he is booked for misdemeanor drunk driving and released the following morning. Later that day, he would take to Facebook with an apology. My decision to drive last night was irresponsible. I accept full responsibility and there is no excuse for my actions. To my family, constituents, and supporters, I am so deeply sorry. Officers Comerfield and Blanchard did a great job of maintaining a professional and respectable demeanor throughout the encounter. They carried out their duties thoroughly and fairly, despite the suspect being a public authority figure in his own right. This is a perfect example of how not just a senator, but any citizen should be treated during a traffic stop.